Been to Agne. Hi, how are we? How you doing today on this Wednesday? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, it's uh, a beautiful day here in Los Angeles where I live. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are, wherever you're living, first and foremost, where you're living inside. I hope it's beautiful inside here. And whatever you need to do to make it beautiful, take a moment to do so. Um, and uh, be here with us today. I'm super excited to be talking to Sarah Nelson today. Uh, she's head of the Flight, Flight Attendants Union. And I've been reading so much about everything going on in um, the sky on so many airplanes. I've had friends. I had a friend who came in last week who said four people on his plane were arrested. Um, that the cops came in and took four people out. One person was arrested. Uh, we've heard of stories about brawls on airplanes and it got me thinking as we come into the 4th of July, what can all of us do to support flight attendants? What's, what are they thinking? Uh, what can um, we all do? So I'm really excited to be talking to her. Um, and I love seeing all of you saying that you're coming from Hungary, coming from all places around the country. I love that. Um, uh, I love when I when people tell me where they're coming from. Mark Kristoff, it's a beautiful day. Admire what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, no flying, says Amy Nelson. Well, no, there's a lot of flying. We just have to figure out how to fly um, safely and how to fly well and how to fly peacefully. That starts with us, right? What is the um, what is the uh, way we bring ourselves to the plane, right? How, what's it like for us on the inside? What's it like for, uh, what is the nature that we're bringing to the flight? So, uh, oh, there's the fitness gourmet saying, I flew uh, to lots of places and there was lots of tension in the plane, uh, lots of turmoil. Um, so we have to remember um, that it's, uh, these are unprecedented times. There are pilot shortages, there are long lines in airports, and flight attendants um, are inheriting people who are stressed out, teed off, anxious, and how do we handle that ourselves? That's a question really for all of us. How do we um, come to these airline flights with our best foot forward? Um, so people saying here, be have good manners and patience. Some people saying, bring lavender onto the plane. Uh, get police on the airplane. Uh, so there's all kinds of um, suggestions, uh, right? That uh, um, maybe they need to start with a meditation. Oh, I like that idea. That's really uh, actually a really good idea. Can you imagine that? I remember on Southwest, they used to do, you know, kind of have somewhat funny uh, announcements by the flight attendants, but maybe they could start with a meditation, asking everybody to take a deep breath, uh, asking everybody for their patience, asking everybody to um, fly in with Sarah. There we go. So we're going to hear from Sarah Nelson what she thinks would be a good idea and how we can help the flight attendants. What do they need from our government, from us? Um, Yay! Hi, hi, how are you? <laughs> hi, thank you. I'm so uh, this, glad to connect with you. I was uh, just talking about you. I've been watching you on all kinds of news programs and <laughs> uh, admire the job that you've been doing and how you've been explaining yourself. And I thought to myself, before July 4th, I want to talk to her. Thank you. We all need to hear from you. Yeah, How thank you, you so much. For... Well, um, actually, it has been pretty nonstop. And I got to tell you that, um, I mean, this has been a rough year for everybody, right? And right. Um, what we're seeing out there is that everybody is at a stress level 10. 
And, um, and hey, listen, somebody said the other day, they were saying they were in a bank and they, someone was in a hurry and they let them cut in line. And they acted as if it was the most incredible thing they had done for them. They were so bold over that someone would do something nice for them. And I think, you know, if we just, like, I just want to step back for a minute because we didn't have people on our planes essentially for a year. Not really. Yeah. Um, right, right. And, and so people are coming back to a situation where they're crammed in on our planes because we don't have all of them back up in the air yet because we don't have full demand back. But what that's causing is everyone to be jammed in together. And for the past year, we have been keeping each other safe essentially by not contacting people. I mean, I remember this past year going out on a walk on our trail and everybody's wearing masks and you almost are like trying to avoid each other. And that's yeah. how you showed respect was to stay away from each other. Right. And it's not natural. And so the other thing that was happening was people were staying in their homes and doing this, frankly, this tremendous act of solidarity to try to keep each other safe right. by staying apart and then watching their TVs and hearing this narrative that we're a divided nation. And so we are now, we are often at the tip of the spear on our planes because yeah. we're a microcosm up in the air of all of society. And we often will have human conflict come out on our planes, but we have never seen anything like this. So in I was the first- I say, Sarah, it's, it's much worse than we've yeah. ever seen. And we're yeah. seeing, you know, brawls, flight attendants, yeah. uh, you know, being tackled, being hit. I mean, yeah. what, what are you hearing from your members, from flight attendants? Are they afraid to get on the plane now? Uh, um, some, I have to say, flight attendants are really tough people. <laughs> Yeah. And they're very resilient. But, you know, there's a lot of trepidation because we have been trained to deal with these incidents, uh, unruly passenger incidents. And I have to tell you, back in the 90s, we were advocating for legislation. Um, your uncle helped us with that. But uh, <laughs> advocating for legislation um, to have fines and penalties for anyone who is interfering with our duties or assaulting a flight attendant. And we got those in place. And actually, when the media started reporting on those consequences, the unruly passenger incidents went down. But, okay, that is sort of a different scenario. And then we have the post 9-11 scenario, too. But this now, in the first six months of this year, we are on track. If we stayed at this level, we would have more reports in this year than in the entire history of aviation. That's so how out of control do this is. So what do we do? I mean, I can't, yeah. we don't go a day now without hearing about, so people are afraid to fly. We're yeah. hearing about pilot shortages, long <laughs> lines, and then people feel like I'm going to get on the plane after I waited a long time. I've waited a long time to fly and I'm going to get on there and there's going to be a brawl and I'm yeah. terrified. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, let's face it. Our jobs have been at risk because people have been afraid to fly because fundamentally, if people can't take safety for granted in aviation, they're not going to buy a ticket. Right. So it's so our role. Um, and I just want to take people through this. I mean, we do something different in aviation than you do anywhere else in the country. And we might do things that people would like to see in other areas of the country, like not allowing guns or knives into our workspace. Yeah. And um, you, you have to practically undress to show that you're not a security threat to get here. And then once you get to the plane, the flight attendants are there for your safety and security. That's, that's fundamentally why we're there and your health too. We lobbied to get uh, defibrillators on board so we can revive people from heart attacks. And we we deal with all kinds of medical emergencies and even deliver babies sometimes. Yeah. Um, but uh, we give instruction to keep people safe. And so, for example, the seatbelt sign, when that comes on, we have to go through the cabin and enforce everybody's got to put your seatbelt on. Because we don't say to people, if you believe that your seatbelt's going to protect you, then put it on. <laughs> we say... Clear air turbulence can throw you to the ceiling suddenly, and when you come down, you're going to hurt other people too. So for, for your safety and the safety of everyone around you, you have to wear a seatbelt. We are doing the same thing with masks right now. And I have to tell you, a lot of people have asked, is the mask requirement the cause of the conflict? Right. And if we remove that, would we take the conflict away? And our experience is no. People are coming really? to the plane with it, now the mask may be a flashpoint for them because they've been told that it's a symbol of conflict in this country, but huh. it's not just the mask policy. We're what is it? What is it? Well, then? 
It seems to be really this, this idea that we're in conflict. I have to tell you, adding to that, we all have the shared experience in this pandemic of the inequality um, in this country, the, that the trillion, the almost trillionaires, the billionaires got richer while we, well, more were pushed into poverty. But that's um, not going to make people attack a flight attendant, is well, it? Well, I think that people are, people are angry and they're, they're feeling alone and, um, and they have also kind of forgotten how to be around other people. And they have been sitting there and listening to this idea that we're at odds with each other. And so they're coming to the door of the airplane with that in mind, as okay. opposed to what we would normally see, which is what are the rules? I want to follow them and just have a safe, uneventful flight. So what can we do? So you're approaching a really busy time, right? Yeah. Fourth of July. Yeah. And as I said, people are being told, okay, let's, everything's opening, rush back out. And what they're being met with, there are labor shortages. We hear about yeah. flights being canceled because yeah. we don't have enough pilots. Yeah. Uh, they go to restaurants and there aren't enough servers, so they yeah. can't get in. Uh, yeah. They go to retail shops. Everybody's quit. So yeah. everybody's in this rush, wait Phase, right? <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. rush onto the plane and they're terrified though. And I would assume flight attendants are terrified. So wh mm -hmm. what is it? It's no alcohol on the plane? So, okay. So alcohol is a major contributor in these events. So we are saying let's pause alcohol sales uh, okay. for a period of time. Some of our airlines have done that. We appreciate that. Um, we have a problem in the airports because right now, for example, we're talking with the FAA and TSA about making sure that the airports know that they should stop the COVID procedures of giving takeaway alcohol. That's a hangover from the protocols for COVID where they were having no one come and sit yeah. down. Um, but it's time to stop that now because people are coming to the airport and they don't really know what the rules are. I would yeah. say that most people aren't coming saying, I'm going to go get in a fight. <laughs> But, yeah. you know, they're already stressed to uh, max 10 and then they get there. And when things don't go as you expect or things are uh, or you're being told that you can't do something and you didn't know that was going to be the case. A lot of times, a lot of us can feel a little anger. Why are you telling me that? Right. right. And so I think that what's happening is I, I think about I've been a five tent for 25 years. Yeah. Flight attendants like to bid off over the holidays and over the summer, not because we actually like to spend our holidays and summer with our families necessarily, although that may be an added bonus, but really because it's harder during that, those times because you have more people who just kind of don't know the program. And so when you have the program, so right now people should expect <laughs> long lines. Yeah. They should not have alcohol. You don't but, want people yeah. coming on the plane with alcohol. They no. have to wear a mask. <laughs> yes. They have to wear a mask. Yes. Can they be and, unvaccinated coming onto a plane? So you can be unvaccinated, but that's one of the reasons that everyone has to wear a mask because there, yeah. there in fact, there's three reasons that everyone has to wear a mask. One, um, not everyone has access to the vaccine yet. So children under the age of 12 don't have access to the vaccine. And there are certain medical conditions where people can't have access to the vaccine. Um, we also, also aviation is global. And right now we don't have aviation opened up with the rest of the world. And until we do, we won't have business travel back. And so because of that, if you have only people who are flying for leisure reasons or for a family emergency or something, if only those people are competing over the ticket prices, the prices are going to rise. But if you actually bring back business travel and you have international travel, a lot of that evens out and they pay typically higher rates. And then that makes room for lower rates for the rest of the people who are flying once in a year or twice in a year or something. And so all of that is not back and normal yet. And as you said, there's also a shortage. There's a shortage of TSA agents. So you might have a long line at security. There's a shortage. We actually did a really good thing. We got um, COVID relief. That was payroll support. And right. it could only be spent on workers pay and benefits. And that kept us in our jobs and connected to our certifications. But remember, there was a lapse from October 1st until the end of December because Congress didn't act. And so actually those shortages that you're seeing right now are the cause of that pause where people were off the job and lost their certifications. So we're gonna, it, it would be so much worse if Congress didn't act. So I have to give kudos to anyone who worked on getting that COVID relief done because we wouldn't have our airlines in place at all to be able to act. 
all across the board, we have a labor shortage because we have a shortage of good jobs. In Kentucky, 3% of the jobs are better than $20,000 a year. People are done with spending more money to come to work than they're bringing home to take care of their families. Yeah. And so we need to raise those standards. But in aviation, it was also about losing our certifications. And once that happens, it takes longer to get them back. And that's why you saw those flight cancellations. So I think what you're saying is so that people, so you want all airlines to get rid of alcohol in, on flights. Right now, because yeah. here, here's the thing. There's two things about this. One, it's a major contributor. And we have an epidemic right now. This is really like out of control. And so we right. shouldn't be doing anything to add to it. But the other thing that I would tell you, Maria, is that um, this is alcohol can be a unifier, too, because people on all sides of the issue are saying, OK, we'll follow the rules. Let me have my drink. <laughs> and so I also think it's an opportunity for us to give a real attention on this issue and have everybody understand if we all just follow the rules, then we have access to the freedom of flight and you can have a drink on your flight and you can have a nice time. But right now, so, but people, as they kind of rush back to the airport, what you're saying is expect shortages at TSA, expect yeah. maybe flights to be delayed. You will yeah. have to wear a mask. Yes. You do need to follow these rules, yes. right? And I, when, if somebody gets in a fight or something, are you kind of permanently disbarring <laughs> them from flying? What are the ramifications? What are the results if you get in a fight or if you're unruly? So under federal law, you can be fined up to $35,000 for a single incident, and you are subject to criminal prosecution up to 20 years in jail. And um, we are encouraging DOJ to be active in that criminal prosecution, not so much because we want people going to jail. We don't. We want people to be very clear about what the consequences are, because right. that yeah. clarity actually yeah. helps them make better decisions for themselves, right? Right. Um, and it, it helps us all understand what we have to do and the seriousness of it. Um, so we're encouraging that. Also, airlines right now are taking the step to ban people from the airline. Now, what we're That's trying right. to do as well is to make this a coordinated effort across the entire industry. So if you're banned on Alaska Airlines, you should be banned on Delta Airlines, too. And so we are, we are actually seeking that right now. You're seeking that from the Congress or you're seeking that? We're, we, we believe actually this could be a coordination by the administration. Um, but yes, in the absence of action from the administration, uh, um, legislation. And there are legislators who are working on that legislation right now. Is there anything else you're seeking? So that's good. So if you mess up on Delta, you're banned across the board. If you mess right. up on Alaska, you're banned across the board. So yeah. you think you're going to be able to game the system. You're going to have to wear a mask. You should expect long lines, yep. right? Yep. You should be attentive to, you know, flights are being canceled because yes. there is a shortage. So yep. we need to be aware, kind of people are like, why is there a shortage? Why didn't the airlines think this through? Why did they get more flights? <laughs> yeah, well, so, um, you know, we really worked on this. And like I said, it would be far worse if we hadn't gotten that relief in place because this is a technical issue that nobody understood when there wasn't the demand. And we said, when the demand comes back, we've got to be in place to be able to meet that demand. The airlines um, bear some responsibility on this because they are trying to ramp up as quickly as possible. And then what yeah. happens is when you don't have any slack in the system, if there's a weather event, then workers are timing out and there's not enough coverage. And so, it, it, like I said, it would be far worse if we hadn't taken that action on the relief and keeping people yeah. in their jobs and connected to their uh, security and um, safety credentials. Um, but it, it could happen and people have to be aware of that. The other um, piece of advice that I would give yeah. is that a lot of the reason that the um, TSA lines are slowing down is because people are bringing prohibited items in their bags. And that could just be a bottle of water that you forget to take out. So when that happens, your bag's going to go through, they're going to pause it, they're going to check for what that is. It's going to slow everything down, going to slow everyone down behind you. So if you pack an empty bag and you know exactly what's in that bag and you go to the TSA website and you see what um, size liquids can you bring, um, what, what yeah. are the things that you can't pack in your bag but you have to check, um, if you do all of that prep on the front end, you're going to be doing a lot for yourself and for all the people around you to speed things up and make it easier for the TSA officers to do their job. Sarah, have you seen, a, are there flight attendants who are saying to you now, like, I'm out? 
this is just too much, yeah. this is chaotic. We're yeah. hearing, you know, I've talked to police officers who say, you know, people, everybody's retiring or we can't yes. recruit new people or you see yes. retail people are saying we can't find new people. Are you yeah. seeing that or feeling that with flight attendants as well? There, yeah, there are people who are saying, okay, you know, I'm out and, and maybe I'm close to retirement and I, this is not how I want to end my career. Um, more people are saying, um, fix it because I love this yeah. job. This is not the job I remember, but fix it. We know it can be good. We know, you know, I mean, honestly, we see all kinds of life come on our planes. And typically, actually, when we go through a struggle of, let's say, a delay, and it's the crew and the passengers all together, and we're getting, right. everybody's frustrated, everybody's missing out on things, right? But you go through this experience where you're struggling together. And uh, typically what we see at the end of that is everyone clapping when the plane gets down, this real feeling of solidarity. We yeah. made it together. People are exchanging phone numbers. They're passing each other their bags. They're being helpful. They're letting the people go first who have connections and are trying to get to them. And that is typically what we see on a plane. We have people, you were talking about Southwest Flight Tents telling jokes, but yeah. all of us have celebrated birthdays and we have announced, you know, we've got uh, these military service on board, let's give them a, a, a hand for, um, you know, giving to our country. And that is typically the spirit that we see on our planes. And so this is a, a really foreign environment right now, but I also want to be really clear. Don't expect that every single flight, this is happening. Where, where we have clear announcements in the gate, clear yeah. announcements when people get on the plane and, and the tone is set, these are the expectations, Frankly, those flights go very well. So a lot of this has to do with setting the communications and giving people exactly what they can expect. So I think basically what you're saying is that people are, are coming to these flights with mixed signals or not yes. being totally aware of what the policy, the new yes. policies are. So people, if you're rushing back uh, to fly, be prepared to wait, be prepared yeah. to go slow, mm -hmm. be prepared to wear a mask, vaccinated or not, right? Yes, um, yes. Be prepared Absolutely. not to get your alcohol. It, yes, yes. It's really important. And, and understand that that is for your safety. Okay, yes. so it's yes. not just because just we're trying to punish people, but it's because yeah. we're trying to keep everybody safe. Typically, we would have about 30% of the passengers be regular passengers who are flying all the time. Yes. And it's not like they're better passengers. They just know the program. And so they also are helpers. So think about how you can be a helper. Listen up for the flight attendant instructions. Look around. See if somebody's struggling with something. Offer them some help. You know, I cannot believe how far that goes when people just think in that way. And this is, I really appreciate this opportunity to have this discussion because I've been through a whole set of discussion about this, about here's the consequences, here's the penalties, here's the rules. But we also just have to have a discussion about how we want to rejoin society here yeah, and exactly. treat each yeah. other and yeah. live I together. That's, that's a really good point because everybody, it's kind of like everybody's got, it's certainly here in California, okay, we're open. So there's this <laughs> rush and then everybody's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I didn't yeah. realize how much has changed, how yeah. I've changed and what are, I think that's a really good line. What are the protocols for rejoining society and that we all have to, put our patient's hat on a little bit and say like, everybody's trying to readjust and rejoin at a different pace, right? Than exactly. what they're used to. And what you're saying is that kind of the flyers that had been there all along, there's a lot of new people flying yes. that don't know the rules and haven't done it a lot. And therefore they're meeting people who have, I was struck by though that incident where somebody tried to, I guess it was a flight attendant who tried to, um, a uh, retired flight attendant, an off-duty flight attendant, and how all the passengers grabbed him and took him to the ground. Yeah, with at the direction, I want to be really clear, at the direction of the other crew. So, right. so clearly this was a troubled person, right? right. And um, I think that speaks to like, we're all human beings and we're all, uh, we're all struggling here. And, and that, that's, that makes me very sad, actually. These people acting out on planes, I know they're struggling too. But our concern there is that it will become a bigger problem. So we've got to get it contained up in the air. We can't just pull the plane over and stop. We can't call for help. <laughs> we got to we got to manage that in that metal tube that we're all enclosed in. 
Are so, you hopeful that you're going to be able to manage this situation? Or are you kind of thinking this will work itself out? Or do you think you have to really buckle down hard on it right now? So we have to buckle down hard on it right now because um, as I was talking to the FAA administrator the other day, this is like nothing we've ever seen before and it really does seem to be an epidemic and we have to treat this differently and have all of our focus on it. So we're doing everything we can in talking with the administration and talking with lawmakers, talking with our airlines, coordinating with the airports, um, you know, trying to make it very clear to travelers, get good communication out there and you're helping with this Instagram <laughs> session so that people know what's up. Um, it's, um, we're, we're, we're doing that constantly and, and actively working at it. So it's not just about those penalties, but trying to actually get good information out there so that, um, people can come and know what to expect and be helpers. What about the idea of just having air marshals on every flight? Yeah. So the air marshals have a very specific mission and that is to protect the flight deck. And, um, they, we would need to hire, gosh, I mean, we couldn't hire fast enough to deal with the problem that we have right now. I know this is something that people would like to see. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it myself, but um, it's, it's probably not a practical solution when we are facing this problem right now. But it would be a solution if you could hire, if they could hire air marshals on. Uh, sure, all. yeah. I mean, go for it. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we, we, really need, we really need the public's help here. We really need to be thinking about how we're acting with each other. And I would say that, you know, we're seeing this so, um, so forcefully on our planes with the video and everything. But, you know, this is happening on buses and on trains and in the post office and at grocery stores, um, these conflicts. So let's, let's recognize that the plane, again, is a microcosm of what's happening in society. And it's yeah. on all of us now to really check our patients, as you were saying, to really understand how we can be helpful and how we can be kind to others and set a new tone. Okay, there you have it, Sarah Nelson, set a new tone. Fourth of July is around the corner, so we have to recognize. One final thing, people are saying that when people come back at the levels that they're coming back right now, people are thinking the planes are going to be dirty again. They're not going to observe oh. the COVID protocols that they had in place when people were flying. Now everybody, as you said, they used to have one seat in between on Delta. That's gone. Yes. So true or not true? So planes are going to be packed. Um, the cleaning is happening way better than before COVID, maybe slack a little bit since they've been um, really ramping up service here, but way better than we've ever seen before. The air filtration system is better than any in any office building. And if everyone is wearing a mask, we're staying safe. And remember, even if you're vaccinated, you can carry that, um, that virus or a variant of it. And so we don't want to contribute and extend this pandemic. We all got to be wearing that. And we're also part of a global system in transportation. And so if we want to reopen to the rest of the world, we need to have the same protocols in the U.S. as they have around the rest of the world so that we can all stay safe. Sarah Nelson, you've done a great job. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with Thank us. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is a really valuable conversation, as you said, letting people know uh, it is different. Mm -hmm. It's different now. So if yeah. you haven't flown before or if you're coming back, don't expect it to be the same way. Uh, there are protocols, and if you don't follow them, you're going to get a major timeout. Yeah, 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 maybe a permanent timeout. So a be careful. Timeout. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So All right, much. thank you. Okay. Bye. So good that what she said. I hope that if you're following or if you're going to be flying for the 4th of July, uh, remember what Sarah said. It is a very different environment than perhaps the last time you flew. These planes are crowded, there are less pilots, there are less. TSA agents, there are long lines in airports. So take a deep breath, take a deep breath. It's gonna take you a long time. You're gonna need your patience. You're going to need your mask and it's gonna be different. So as we all rush back, we're rushing back to wait. Uh, I know that's a paradox. I know it's a little bit weird, but um, I think if we think of it that way, maybe it's, it'll be a little bit easier to uh, manage. So thank you all uh, for joining. Sarah Nelson is the American Union leader. She's the president of the Association of Flight Attendants. And she is speaking on behalf of all the flight attendants. And we have to remember flight attendants, their first job is to keep us safe, not to bring us food, 
or drink to keep us safe and to keep our fellow passengers safe so that we get to where we're going safely, which is the unifying thing. We all want to get there safely. So I think what she was really great is calling upon all of us to be the helpers and to understand that we're all rejoining, having had very different experiences and, um, and that we're going to have to be patient as we kind of figure out what this new normal or what the new um, future is going to look like and feel like. So um, thank you all. Yeah, somebody said they should just give them fines, not just threaten to keep them out. They're giving them fines uh, and uh, barring them from all flights. So that's good. I think they're doing uh, the best that they can. And they're advising us that life is different on planes today. So we have to pay attention. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you subscribe to the Sunday paper. If you don't, you can find the link in my bio and sign up. It's a free weekly newsletter that gives you information, insight, and inspiration. And it's free. You just get to sign up. Zoop. Okay. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.